following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. use the word human very often in different ways and the problem in this day and age is that all of us believe that is a human being but uh, indeed we are not and this is precisely uh, we gather and why we practice this in order to eventually reach that level which has uh, many levels but let us uh, uh, see, uh, uh, to begin, the five letters of the word human. Uh, when you look in the dictionary, they explained uh, what a human, according to their beliefs or their knowledge, uh, has to be. But uh, remember that the English language is rooted uh, most in the German language. Of course, when we look into the English that we speak today, uh, uh, we find a lot of Latin and many other Greek words and from other sources. And as we were explaining, uh, uh, the runic alphabet that we call the Futhark is uh, the root of uh, the Hebrew alphabet and many other uh, alphabets that we find, like the Latin, which is the one that we use in order to write in this day and age. So many times we said that the word human or the being itself physically speaking, is related with a five-pointed star that, uh, as you see here, relates to the five letters that we are uh, talking about. The two uh, legs, two arms, plus the head, are the five points of that star when opened that we are talking about. Related with that uh, famous uh, drawing of... Uh, Leonardo da Vinci. So, all the letters that we use in, the, in Latin language have different sources, but mainly in the Futhark. For instance, the first letter that uh, we find in the word human is the letter H. In the letter H, is what we call in, in the Futhark, the runic alphabet, the rune Hagal, which is a rune that we always perform in different, uh, uh, different practices that we do. That's the main one. And it is because the letter H relates to the 12 tribes of Israel which are the archetypes related with a true human being. And of course, we have to explain why the letter H is related with that, because if you look in the Futhark, 
you will find that the rune uh, Hagal, of, which is related with the age, is made in different ways. First, it has the shape of an X cut by a horizontal line. And if you see there, this is nothing but also like uh, the six pointed star. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is what they common, uh, what commonly see in the rune Hagal. But it's also uh, presented with these three lines, like this, like the H that we have, or like the N, which is also how they see three, three lines too. So when you address the rune Hagal, either it is in this way, or like the H, or like the letter N. And when you uh, inquire about the word human, you see that the, the H is in the beginning and the end is at the end, which means that uh, the human being is related with two, two Hagals, two runes. And uh, if we take into account that uh, when we add with the human being is an androgynous being, means male, female. Because uh, we have the two polarities in different manners, different ways that we always address. Matthew Samael on Veor explains in his uh, book, the runic alphabet or the magic of the runes, that the rune Hagal, as we show it here in the beginning with the, an X cut by a transversal line, is the same uh, six-pointed star, which is the symbol that we find in different religions. Uh, presently, people think that the Star of David is a symbol that is a patrimony of, uh, of Judaism. I, uh, I was going to say patrimony of Israel, but in, in reality, it is patrimony of Israel. But when I address Israel, I'm not naming any, any race from this uh, uh, civilization. But in, uh, in, uh, indeed, we are addri addressing the 12 archetypes, which are really very uh, named in the Bible in different ways. The Bible talks about the tribes of Israel, and you know there are 12, which are related, of course, with the six-pointed star, because the six-pointed star has six entrances which are feminine. The points are masculine. So if you count the six entrances plus the six points, then you find the 12. In, re in reality, it's a, it's a star of 12 points. Uh, six feminine and six masculine. That's why we said the, the Rune Hagal is related with the 12 tribes of Israel. Right? And... Uh, you know that the 12 tribes of Israel are related with the 12 zodiacal signs. And uh, we are born in any sign in order to receive the influence of these uh, uh, forces of the zodiac. What we call the 12 constellation or the, the zodiacal belt. And uh, our soul, our essence, or consciousness, is always influenced by the 12 constellations in different manners. Of course, the sign that we have has more influence on certain constellations. But remember that when we study the 12 zodiacal signs, we find that they are related with the four elements. In each sign, we always find, uh, or we would say, no, in each element, which are the earth, the air, the fire, and the water, 
relates to three signs of the zodiac. And uh, fire, for instance, relates to Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. And like, why do you find uh, uh, three signs in each uh, uh, element? So therefore, behold here and understand how these 12 forces are related with the four elements. And how a human being has to be influenced by this powerful sign, Hagal. And that's why when we perform uh, practices and exercises in Gnosticism, we always address the elements and the cosmic forces. Because uh, those forces descend into the earth through the elements, through the atmosphere. And obviously, a uh, human is somebody that is in contact physically, mentally, psychologically, spiritually with the cosmic forces. And he's aware of it, he's conscious of it. But most of us, when we talk about this, we really don't know. That's why we gather in order to hear uh, explanations about uh, our origins. These 12 uh, constellations or archetypes, which are related with the cosmos and with nature, the four elements, are in each one of us, synthesized in the sexual glands, the sexual energy. And that's why our tradition insists in the, uh, in the work that we had to perform, the dominion that we had to acquire in the sexual energy. Because as we physically developed in the womb of our mother for nine months, in order to become physically, in this case, uh, with the shape of a human, because physically we have the shape of a human being. But we are talking here in the complete sense of the word. So, in the same way that uh, the sexual energy from the womb of our mother made us, in the same way, the womb of our Divine Mother came made us too. But we had for that to understand where is that womb which in the Futhark or runic alphabet is showing us that in order for that to be fulfilled we had to follow the sequence of the word, the U, the U, letter U, which relates to the rune Ur, which is the womb. That womb is not the feminine womb. In order to come into this uh, physical world, we came through the feminine womb, all of us, without exception. But uh, men and, uh, and women, or men and women, have within their anatomy another womb, which is precisely the womb that the divinity uses, or we would say our monad uses, in order to crystallize in each one of us all of this that the H is showing us. And that womb is the spinal medulla. We always insist that the main organ, we will say, in our physicality is the spinal medulla, which is connected to the sexual glands. Remember that in many lectures we explain that the spinal medulla with the brain 
is what we call the central nervous system. Uh, the central nervous system, the spine and the brain, the spinal medulla and the brain, floats in that water, which in uh, medicine is called the cerebrospinal fluid. No fast that. So the spinal medulla, which is that womb related with the letter U, is precisely that. And uh, when in Hebrew, which is, a, is an alphabet that derives from the futhark that we are talking about, the letter Vav always insists. The letter Vav is what they use when they want to write the letter U, Vav. Because that precisely is the uterus, where God creates the human. And of course, in order to do it, that womb needs the sexual energy. As the womb of any woman needs the sexual energy in order to have and to develop a child. In the same way, the spinal medulla needs the sexual energy in order to create the human being, what the Bible calls into the image of God. Hmm? That's precisely the, the point. Remember that when we talk about Elohim, God in English, it's a word that means a multiple perfect unity. It relates to many forces, cosmic and natural forces. You know, they are, they are outside of us and inside of us, physically speaking. So to create a human being into uh, the image of God, we need to take advantage of the sexual energy as well. But the womb is different. In many lectures, we always explain, when you read the Bible, if you remember the book of Genesis, which is the first book written there, it is written, and God said, let there be light, and the light was. And God said, let there divide the waters from the waters. And God said, and repeating and repeating, always and, and, and. And in Hebrew, in order to write and, you write it with the letter Vav. So that just, when you know Kabbalah and alchemy, you, you immediately see, well, he's talking about the, the spiritual womb, which is the spinal medulla, the letter Vav. That God is doing that because it's the first letter that appears in, a, in every verse. And, and. Right? It's not like, like saying that uh, in order to explain what God did in, uh, one after all the thing, right? Everything has his explanation. And that is precisely the, the letter U. U of Hugh. Which in Sanskrit is a mantra. Right? Uh, just to give a short explanation, all of us, since we are in this study, you know the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, Hum, right? And this is precisely here because also that alphabet, Sanskrit alphabet, and also the Tibetan alphabet, the way that they write these mantras, of course, we write it with Latin letters. The same root, same source. So meaning that hum is at the very end of that mantra, hum mani padme hum. And that is the spirit, the seed spirit. Uh, the seed, of course, when you talk about seed, we're talking about a sexual force, right? the seed that is here. So you see how everything is explained in the same word. When you meditate and analyze, we're knowing, of course, the alphabets. That's why a, a true serious Gnostic has to know by memory the Kabbalistic alphabet, which are 22 letters, and the Futhark, which is the source of that alphabet in order to associate and to understand and comprehend 
uh, esoterically, the meaning of the word, in this case, human. Uh, when you arrive and study this uh, and extend yourselves uh, in this explanation, this comprehension, you really understand that you are far away, far away, in order to be really what the word is telling you, that you are. This is when somebody says, for instance, uh, in different uh, places we hear, they say, but God made us into his own image because they assume that they are humans. And this is, this is, this is ludicrous. You know, God is God. It's, 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 it's a multiple perfect unity that we have to study, which is Elohim in, in Hebrew. And if you see, for instance, uh, if you follow the days of the book of Genesis, you find that uh, the human being, which is called Adam in the Bible, was made male-female into the image of Elohim, right? And he was made male-female into the image of Elohim. In which day? Because there are seven days of creation. Which day was that day where Elohim made Adam into his own image, into his own likeness? The sixth day. The sixth day. And when you know the Hebrew alphabet, you know that the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Vav. Again, which is the medulla, right? He's showing us very clear that he made in the letter vav that human being that we are talking about. And that we were explaining uh, this morning that the letter vav, which is just uh, a line, It's simple like that. Of course, it has another shape, but it's just a vertical line. Above is a little bit uh, wider than in the bottom. That is showing uh, the brain and the medulla. This is what the letter Vav is showing. When you write uh, Vav in Hebrew, you write it with two Vavs. Vav, Vav, two. There's no vowels in the Hebrew alphabet. So you write it just with two. This two is what the book of Genesis says, male, female. Two polarities there. That's why he was made in the sixth day, the sixth letter, Bav. And this is precisely what uh, I was analyzing in Comprehending the, when I was coming in the airplane, I said that will be good to explain to the students there in order to understand about the word human. Because the letter U is that Bab, is that womb that we are very concerned with. Because there is where the energy of the Holy Spirit, which in Sanskrit is called Kundalini, has to rise. And uh, there is where the seven chakras, main chakras that the book of Revelation called uh, seven churches, are to develop. In order for us to have the seven senses of the consciousness, of the soul, because letter U of human we're talking about is related with the tree of life as well. Do you all, all of you are familiar with the tree of life? There is somebody here that don't know the tree of life, that the symbol of the ten sephiroth. All of you know it, right? Well, we find there are three vaths or three pillars. Three columns, because we have the spinal medulla in our spinal column. 
right? But you are familiar with the caduceus of Mercury? With the caduceus of Mercury, the same column, spinal column, with two serpents. Actually, in the beginning, the caduceus of Mercury was, there were three serpents. The caduceus was the third. In Sanskrit, these three pillars or serpents or columns are called Ida en Pingala en Shushumna. That's precisely what uh, the, the three are the three baths. Now, this is very important to know because this is just simple. In order to you go into, into the Hebrew alphabet or into what is written in, in, in clue in the Bible, and you can discover the whole guidance in order to become a human being. This is the sixth letter. And uh, I said it's represented, uh, yeah, like that. A little bit is uh, like that, right? Vav. After the letter Vav comes the letter Zain. The letter Zain is exactly the letter Vav. It's another. But the only difference that you see here is like a little, the letter uh, Zain has it in the very middle. In the very middle. If you observe those letters, they look alike, only with a difference on, on the top. The seventh is, the vertical line is like, like, like a B cross, and the brain had it exactly in the middle, which is another spinal column, right? And from where is this Zain coming from? Well, it's coming after the six, because it's the seven. I mean, it's a representation of the seventh day in the book of Genesis. Where, or in which day, was the woman created? In the seventh day. See, the, the man with two vows represents the male-female, but created in the sixth day. And then he fell asleep, or made it, uh, Elohim made his sleep and took the woman out of. But the woman is different. It's another vav, but a big difference, obviously. All of you are agree with it, right? <laughs> Between, <laughs> but it's another column. Meaning that from from uh, uh, from Adam, it took one polarity and make another. Physicality, exactly with another column, with the three forces in it. Because the three polarities that we're talking about here is what in Christianity is called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And many names and different religions. And those forces are related with the spinal column, Ida Pingala Shushumna. But Ida Pingala Shushumna is in the male and in the female as well. But obviously, Zain has it in the feminine manner. Because when we see a woman, I see that it has a spinal column in the two polarities as well, Ida Pingala, but completely different than in a male. Do you see the beauty of, of creation here? Great. And the seventh which is Sain, the seventh day, is what we call the Shabbat. And the Shabbat is this where it's written there in the Bible. In the Sabbath where, where the, everything was finished, were created, and God rested on the Sabbath in order to make what he made. So the letter U, really, which is the spinal column, 
implies a lot. That in order for you to really be a human, you have to have the two polarities within you and the three forces of your spinal column active in relation with the letter Hagal, which is a six-pointed star that relates to the 12th constellation, the 12th tribes of Israel, which is multiple, perfect unity as well. So here goes the sentence as well. To call yourself an Israelite is to call yourself a human. You see, Kabbalistically, alchemically speaking. That's why there is a lot of confusion about, or I mean, among ignoramuses that read the Bible just literally and thinking that they're True Israelites are in the Middle East. And of course, if they read the Bible literally in other sacred books of alchemy and Kabbalah, they start qualifying themselves as true human beings. Or true men, as they say, and the rest are just animals. Because in reality, all of us are animals. Because to become a, a true Israelite or a true human being is a lot of work to do in us implies all of this, that we are just talking about the two letters, the beginning of the letter human and the second one. We gave a lot of lectures already. I don't want to go deeper into this uh, topic, but just to touch a little bit about the spinal column. Because for us, the Gnostics, the spinal medulla, the brain, and the sexual organs are the main thing here. With these three aspects, or we will say two, because there are two types of waters. The superior waters of fluids and the lower waters of fluids, which are the sexual fluids in us, the two polarities. Because these two polarities, male, female, ex are explained in different manners, different levels. And this is what we have to analyze and comprehend because people ask us why we always do the rune hagal because we need the help of the elements we need the help of the constellations or the forces of the cosmos in order to penetrate into us and through those practices that we do the energies enter are transformed through our metabolism and our storage Store in our sexual glands. But obviously, if our body is polarized feminine, it will be uh, stored in the feminine manner and the man in his masculine manner. And that's why the sexual cooperation is indispensable in order to make the human in that womb. Because that human being will develop in that womb of both male and female when they cooperate sexually. When they know how to procreate in the same manner that Elohim does it. Because if you perform the sexual act and you reach the orgasm, that's the way that the animals multiply. And what you will get from a sexual act like that is a child, like each one of us, who has his physical parents, and we create, we create it through the orgasm in that way. But when you know this doctrine, you are not interested in creating more children, which is a beautiful thing to have children. But we are more interested in to create a child of God inside of us. To get a child of God, to become children of God, it's not easy. It implies a lot of willpower. Willpower, because in order to leave the animal level and to enter into the human level, which is to absorb the light from the sex, and to store it 
in the spinal medulla is a lot of patients. This is how it is written. In patients, you will possess your souls. Because those elements that we call the tribes of Israel or archetypes are parts of our, a soul that are there in the galaxy, in the state of potentiality. They descend through the ways to the practices in, that we perform. And if we absorb them, if we absorb them and we know how, then that human being to the image of God will eventually appear through many initiations. And then you will uh, understand uh, how to become a human being is. Of course, this implies a lot of explanation, but we are giving us here certain, touching certain topics in order for you to understand uh, about the practices that we perform that always relate to the spinal medulla and between men and women, because the woman is Zain. And the, the Bible states, or Moses said in one of his Ten Commandments, keep the Sabbath holy. Right? <coughs> Women said, oh well, we should keep ourselves holy. But... Uh, there's another mystery here. The seven days of Genesis when they are performed in us are related to the seven lower sephiroth of the tree of life. Counting from Hesed, which is the first sephirah beneath the first triangle of the tree of life. And then goes to Geburah, which is the second. Tifereth the third, Metzach the fourth, Hod the fifth, Yesod, Yesod the sixth, and Malkut the seventh. And what is Malkut? It's our physical body. Of course, related with the earth too, there is the physicality. But in us, it's our physical body. That's why I, uh, I explained about the division of, of sexes. Because when we spread about the, the two polarities that Elohim is taking Eve from Adam, it's because Eve is within Adam. So when Eve is coming from Adam, then we find that the woman and the man, the, the Imalkut, the two polarities. So when we talk about the seventh body, or the seventh day, we're talking about our physicality created, right? Law, that's, that's the seventh. So keep the Sabbath holy. That's telling you, keep your physicality holy. And that's why you know, in many religions, the first thing that they, you learn is how to keep your physicality holy. We don't talk about uh, keep your astral body holy and your mental body holy because you don't have astral mental bodies. Eventually we create them if we utilize that medulla or the physical body, which is the physical body is called the laboratory. In the Middle Ages, there was a lot of talk about the laboratory of the alchemist. And a lot of people that were reading the clues of alchemy in the Middle Ages were looking for all the instruments in order to make that laboratory. Meanwhile, they didn't know that they were working with it since we were children. And that laboratory was a physicality. At the end of many years, many alchemists, you see, many years after searching and searching, they said, oh, it is my physical body. <laughs> and here you are receiving this doctrine there directly in order not to waste time. You don't need to build any laboratory. You have it already. You receive and give energy. You have a lot of forces in your body. If you know how to utilize it, then you will build that uh, human being that is named in different ways, right? Uh, in order to know how to utilize, to utilize your chimney, which is your physical, uh, your spinal medulla. So you see the marvelous of this letter Ooh. of human. 
which is precisely that, the, the same, and at the very end. It's at the very end because the letter N in Kabbalah is called Nun, letter Nun, which uh, you write in Latin with the same letter that you find for, uh, in order to write uh, Anan. You see? Anan is a feminine body that tries to, be, to make his, her body holy. But in the Middle Ages, those that discovered the mystery of uh, alchemy were monks and nuns. And they were getting married in privacy and secrecy in order to work with the letter Nun, which means fish in Aramaic. And that relates to the sperm and ovum that we have in the sexual organs. That's why it's at the very end. Because all of that transformation of those forces that come from above are synthesized in our sexual energy, which is called sperm and ovum. And that's the noon. That's why in the Hebrew alphabet there are two types of noon. The normal noon and the final noon. To specify there also the duality. And that's why the word human has the end at the end with the three forces as well. These three forces are represented by the first triangle of the tree of life. Keter, Chokmah, Binah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Many other names in different religious traditions. Excuse me. So you see it, right? It is very, uh, it's not complicated this to understand in order to understand uh, what the word human hides. This morning, we were performing the rune man, right? And we were explaining that the rune man <coughs> relates to the way in which we invoke the cosmic forces that we call the cosmic Christ through the three uh, valves or forces that we have, that we call Idap, Ingala, and Shushunna. The medulla and the two polarities. That's the root man. That's why the root man is very important. In order to become, as in English we know, a man. Which uh, in Sanskrit, man is coming from Manu, and also from manas. Manu is somebody that is connected with all of these forces. That's why uh, uh, we, in the books of the Master Samael on Veor, you find uh, uh, the word uh, Manvantara, that is rooted in Manu Vantara, or the day or the period of Amanu which is a true man. Master Samael says in his books that the founder of this root race, the Aryan race, was the Manu Vaisvasvata. But just by saying a Manu means a human. And from that Manu, we find the word man, which I repeat is related with manas, mind. Somebody that developed Objective reasoning. That's the manners that we want to develop. Because subjective reasoning is the way that uh, everybody uses. The logic or the reasoning that we use is just subjective, very shallow. Talking about this, it's coming into my mind, I had to say it because it gets to the point. There are many intellectuals there that call themselves atheists. And they say that they don't believe in God because they don't see God. They have no proof of God. And then I said they're right. Because anybody that has no proof of God, he, call it, he believes in God, but to have proof of God is to be a Manu. And they don't have it. 
And they were discussing that the origin of the universe was the Big Bang. And another religious person was asking these atheists, well, can you explain me uh, from where that explosion that created the universe called the Big Bang came from? Where? What was before? Nothing, he says. But from that, from where that explosion came? All of a sudden, it happened. I don't know why, but from nothing. Can you explain me nothing? No. How you can explain nothing? <laughs> it's impossible, right? But then I was analyzing this. This atheist is saying the truth. What happened? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Because nothing in Kabbalah is ain, the nothingness. Right? But they think that nothing or the nothingness is nothing. No, it's something. <laughs> you know what I mean? What happened is called the nothingness or the nothing because it's not energy, it's not matter. This energy or this uh, universe in which we live, where we find millions of galaxies, are made of uh, matter and antimatter and energy. But all of that emerged from the nothingness. And that nothingness doesn't mean that it's nothing. It means that it's something that we don't know from where, from where the energy and, and matter emerges. If we, for, for adventure, goes into the nothingness, transform into a human being, which is called a paramartha satya, and then we will know, oh, I know now, what is this nothingness? But in the level in which we are, we, have, we just speculate. Right. So these atheists and this uh, uh, religious person were discussing there, and they said that God doesn't exist, but the nothingness. And then uh, he said, it's right, because the nothing is beyond God's. Even the Elohim emerged from the nothingness. But what is the nothingness? Matthew Samaya says, is a Elohim. Means it's not an Elohim. A means without. No Elohim. It's beyond. But uh, to explain that in a, in a TV show there between the, this uh, debate that they were having, an atheist against a religious, in the end, both of them were confused. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just enjoying it. I said, okay. Uh, they just base the, the, what they know in beliefs. None of them, neither the, the religious that were discussing with the atheists, none of them were developing anything within themselves, just beliefs, theories. Their, their earth, Malkut, the physicality, in both of them, was empty and without form, as the book of Genesis says. And if our earth, which is our physicality, is empty and without form, what is the light? Darkness was upon the face of the abyss. So we need to make light first in order to understand what we're talking about. But there are people there that go and talk about God. They say, I don't believe in God. I am an atheist. When somebody comes to me and says that, I say, well, you are an atheist thanks to God. Because theos means God. And if you are atheist, you are utilizing the word there, so you are an atheist thanks to the theos, to the God. <laughs> Nobody can be an atheist without the God, right? To deny the existence of God is to really show that we don't know anything <laughs> about what we're talking about. But here in this uh, tradition, little by little, the notion of that that we call God or Elohim is coming into our consciousness. And then we realize that in order for other people to understand that, they have to develop, they have to practice, they have to absorb the light. Because that's the first thing that the book of Genesis states, and Elohim said, let there be light, and the light was. And after that, if the light, then everybody sees. But in darkness, 
we cannot see anything. And that, of course, implies what uh, we're talking about, about manas. Because it's mind. And when we have subjective manas, or what we call subjective reasoning, we, could not, we cannot know anything about what we call God. Only if we develop objective reasoning. So the true human being is a being that has objective reasoning. But that develops when we know how to transmute the sexual energy and to pass through initiations. Before that, we can talk about beliefs or non-beliefs and uh, fall into confusion and thinking that just by believing in this or believing in that, we are going to acquire that level. There's many ways. So that is, of course, when we talk about manas, that begins with the letter M, right? Letter Mem in Kabbalah, symbol of water. Matthew Samael of Veor stated, stated to us that for the solar light, for the light to enter into any planet, that planet needs to have water. Without water, the solar light won't develop any life. And the proof is here in our, in our planet Earth, unfortunately, with polluted water. But it's going to be clean. We have water. The oceans, lakes, rivers, that's the mem. And we physically have water, fluids. How much percent are we, are our physicality water? 70 something, right? We are more water than anything. But when we talk about it, we said about the atmosphere too, it's water, right? The, the proof is right now that it's raining a little bit outside and the water is coming from the, the clouds. So we have water in the atmosphere and water below. We physically also have those two types of waters. Waters above are those waters or fluids uh, upon which the cerebral spinal floats. In the sexual fluids always associated with the sea with the ocean, with the rivers. And so that's why the book of Genesis in the seventh day talks about the rivers of Eden. But not only there, in all the days of Genesis, it begins that the Spirit of God was floating above the waters, the face of the waters. And the water was creating life, etc., etc., etc. That's alchemy. That's the letter Mem. of uh, man or human. And what about the letter Aleph? That's a very beautiful letter. A, A, or Aleph. Symbol precisely of what we're talking about here. We explained that the letter Aleph is uh, written in this way. The spinal column and two letter jots. This is how it is written the letter Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The letter Yad symbolizes what we call in Sanskrit the Shakti potential from the waters. You see, in the atmosphere, when we are doing the runes, we are absorbing the Shakti potential that is the solar light that was placed during the day in the atmosphere. When we transmute the sexual energy, we are absorbing the Shakti potential of the sexual fluids. And that's a symbol of the letter Aleph, because we have fluids above in the brain and fluids below in our sex and divided by the spinal column. 
So a true human has to have an active, an activity. Those two waters, above and below, in order to be encountered with the forces of the cosmos. Because if we go outside of the planet Earth, how do we call those waters? We call it Akasha, the Tadwa Akasha, which is that substance that is in the space, more subtle water, but Shakti potential. Anyone that transmute their sexual forces develop that Shakti potential in his spinal column, in his valve, or their valve, in other words. And then that is a person that has more senses. And he is, or is feeding those senses always with the superior and inferior waters. This little vav of the word human that we are talking about here. Can we continue? Do you, are you following this? Okay, it's good. Somebody can turn the light, let there be light, and then you transmute your sexual energy. <clears throat> and you see there the letter H and the letter N are related with the rune Hagal, right? And what, do, what word do you find or see between the H and the N? Hmm? Yeah, but if you see clearly, it's a mantra, Aum. Aum, right? And Aum is a sacred mantra. In Hinduism, there's the way that it says, it's written Aum, but you pronounce it Aum. Aum. You unite the A and the U and make a, an O, right? But you have to know how to pronounce it. Aum. It's an A ah and U. But most of us, when we hear that, we say just O. But really, the, the vowel O is united, the A and the U. The waters. Right? Because they are left. The waters, above and below. And the U is there. The uterus, spiritual uterus, spinal medulla. We're explaining here. And the M is the waters. Again, the waters. We're working with the waters. So Aum implies, of course, the way in which that which is divine works in the cosmos and in nature. So if you said, I am a human, you are saying, Aum works through me. You see, when we're receiving here the instructions of our meditation, to be aware here and now is to be aware of that. The forces of OM coming from above through our body. And it's a hard work. To reach that level is not easy. So that's a being, a human being. There are many beings in the earth, different levels. There are complete beings. For instance, when you see a lion, in order for a lion to be a lion, needs many uh, attributes, or many elements, in order to be a lion. And if you investigate that lion physically, psychologically, mentally, maybe he, do he doesn't reason, because he's an irrational animal. But spiritual, it has a spirit as well. In order to be a lion, he has everything that he needs in order to be a lion. And if you investigate a bear, he has everything that he needs in order to be a bear. Any animal. 
That's why he's, he's a being, complete being, as an animal as he or she is, is a complete being. So when we said, I am a human being, you are implying that you are a being that has all the attributes of being human. And so, so that's really, never say that after that. You, sometimes we say it and we approach people and we address them with the word human, human being. But we know very well that we are not. That's why we are in these studies. Because we want to be that. And the Bible explains very well, into the image of God. If you meditate and you look inside yourself, look for the images that you will see. <laughs> and then you will see that God is not, not, is not that. Matthew Samuel on Vior was telling us that he reached the level in which his mind was always quiet. He says, for instance, you, in order to enter into Samadhi, you need to do a lot, a lot of work. And finally, your consciousness leaves the physicality, your mind, your emotions, and enter into that uh, level of the universe where there is no thought. That is called Samadhi. And then you experience something beyond the mind. And then he said, but let me tell you that uh, I am in that state all the time. My mind doesn't bother me. And if for a chance I capture something that is bothering me from within my mind, I immediately go and meditate and to see there is something wrong there in my mind. Because I never put in activity my mind, he says, in order to, to be in activity. Only when I am teaching, then I take my mind in order to teach, he says, because it's an instrument that I use in order to teach, in order to write my books. But it's just an instrument. But uh, he says, sorry to tell you, he says, but uh, your mind utilizes you in order to, for you to be what you are. I use my mind. The mind uses you. And this is what happened with all of us. We have many egos, which are mind, minds, plural. So, and of course, if you continue uh, seeing there the, the mantra, Aum, Mani, right? It is always there, that mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum. Padme, by the way, in Sanskrit means lotus flower. That was a Padme is. In other words, a human being is a lotus flower. That's why the chakras are symbolized with lotus flowers. Because this is what a being is. The different lotuses, Padme. So, Om Mani Padme Hum. Is a human in, in synthesis. And now you see why uh, the necessity of utilizing mantras, words, prayers, because all are derived from the first letter, the letter H, which is the rune Hagal. According to the Futark, all the letters derived from Hagal. When you make the Hagal in the way that we do it here, you find all the letters or runes, we will say, related with that. So that's why the importance of practicing runes, because we have in the physicality the way to imitate all of the letters of the sacred futark. And of course, not only in that way, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the sacred alphabet is important. And that's why any prayer in any language, but especially a language that is not so degenerated like our English language, 
Hebrew, Latin, Greek, Sanskrit. Any mantra of, uh, in that language that help us is good. We don't discriminate. So this is why uh, it's important, all of this. Do you have questions? Well, it's a language that had lost uh, uh, most of their spiritual principles. Like, uh, if we study, as we're studying here, the, the word, for instance, human, which is an English word, uh, most of us believe to be a human because we lost the spiritual principles of that word. And we just repeat it mechanically, right? to repeat a language mechanically without knowing the roots of, or, or spiritual roots of that, is just to mumble words without any purpose. That's why we have to be very careful what we, we talk in order to give value to the word. Remember that the words are just stated in the throat. It's another uterus. It isn't aligned with the Spinal medulla. Yeah, well, the 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 human being itself is a five pointed star as well. Physically speaking, as we said, with the two legs, two arms, and one head. And the five-pointed star is a symbol of a word made flesh. In other words, our physicality is a symbol of all that that we explain in relation with human made flesh. But because we don't utilize those forces of values that our pentagram has, but we just waste it. We are an inventor, in, inverted pentagram. Because that star could be positive or negative. Right? Obviously, an inverted pentagram symbolizes the intellect going down. Hmm? And that's why uh, uh, there are many ways in which, in this day and age, people utilize the forces, the values that they at, uh, attract physically in their own way. They are inverted pentagrams. There are many, uh, in this day, a lot of witchcraft, sorcery, in which there are individuals, call it shamans. When you say shamans, we know that they are positive shamans, but to find in this day and age a positive shaman is to find that, that he is or she is a chaste. He's utilizing the sexual force that we were explaining here. Otherwise, he's utilizing forces uh, that he has or she has physically in combination with the forces of the cosmos or of nature for uh, egotistical purposes, being, of course, an inverted pentagram. You can develop negatively or positively. That's why it's written in the book of the law, the Hebrew law. You shall not eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil. You see the two polarities there again. If you enter into these studies, if you continue in fornication, meaning spilling the seed, you start developing powers, you become a demon, awakened demon. Because right now we are asleep in demons. But if you don't disintegrate your animality, you'll become in the end an awakened demon. It's just us to awake in evil and for evil. So therefore, the importance of knowing how to meditate in order to annihilate that, in order not to invert the pentagram. Because when that uh, pentagram reaches self-realization, when that person, which is a pentagram, in a positive way, he receives 
as a sign of his purity, the Star of David, or the six-pointed star. And then united there, the six with the five, which makes 11. The number 11, two vavs again. With those forces, the severity and mercy in the tree of life are forces, where it is the left and the right uh, pillar. And always the central one is always related with the spinal medulla. Those two forces, of course, are shown in different levels. First, energetically, Ida Pingala, and Shushumna. Uh, and then the, the forces that uh, express with the physicality. Because uh, we have other uh, nervous forces or plexuses in each side that are always connected to the spinal column. For instance, physically speaking, the central or the pillar of the tree of life is related with the central nervous system. The left with a parasympathetic nervous system, and the right with a grand sympathetic nervous system. The three nervous systems relate to the same spinal medulla. We're talking about physically. Through those nervous systems is how we receive energies, forces, physically speaking, and how we waste them too. By studying these three nervous systems in relation with the different organs that we have, senses, then we see how. Uh, that we are in a mess, physically speaking, psychologically speaking. Now, going higher, higher in the different levels of the tree of life, we discover that duality also in, uh, in our monad. In, because uh, every sephira of the tree of life relates with the forces, whether in the left or in the right of the tree of life, that we have to balance with the uh, by working with the spinal medulla, which is precisely the, the main organ that we have to take care of with the sexual organs. This uh, work that we are talking about here is related with the symbol of the Greek cross. The Greek cross has three vertical, I mean horizontal lines Right? We explained all the, the duality pointing in, in, in both directions in the vertical line that we had to recenter it in order to control the forces in synthesis. Remember the tree of life, physically speaking, is our spinal column, physically speaking. The two polarities, Ida Pingala, are either in the feminine body or in the masculine body, but also represent, uh, according to alchemy, Kabbalistic alchemy, what we call who and ma, or me and what. That's in the Zohar. I don't want to go there, there because then you will be very confused. Yeah. So, like, a very common phrase is like, God is a you. But that's a character of Judaism, so that's true, right? So, God is in, in you, in God. But God is in you if you are in chastity. Because that Vav, when, when you read the Bible, for instance, says, In the beginning, God created the heaven, and, and, that's the first Vav that appears there. And the earth. It doesn't, it doesn't mean the planet earth. It's telling you that in the beginning God created the heaven. You have your own heaven, your own spirit. 
but your earth and the bath of your earth hmm, was empty and without form and darkness was upon the face of the abyss. It was says explicit, very clear. Right? That's in the beginning for all of us. So when you say you are a human being, or the, I mean God is in you, if you are in chastity, is in you in different levels. And when we talk about this you, you see, in English, uh, we said, uh, I am. And in this day and age, many groups talk about the I am. Because when Moses was in front of Elohim, he said, I am what I am. He says, who are you? I am what I am. You see, present. This is, there are many translations of that, but it's simple. And uh, uh, you said, I am thirsty. I am hungry. And you use that I am. We use that I am many times, right? But you know what I am means? If you want to write I am in, in Hebrew, you write it Yom. Yod, Vav, Mem. Yom. The Bible says, in the evening and the morning, was or where? The first Yom, the first day, the first I am in English. That's the, the origin. It says, I am. You are saying, I am a day. I am light. Because yom, or day in Hebrew, means light. And what is it? Why? Because God called the light day. It's written there. And God called the, the, the light day, and the darkness called it night. So if you said, Day, you're saying light. You said, I am, you are saying that you are enlightened, a Buddha. So don't say it, I am. <laughs> it's difficult, right? Because how are you going to express yourself? You have another question? Well, here you see, uh, it's a very interesting question here. The word Hanuman, you find the word human there also, right? Well, uh, Hanuman, according to alchemy, is what we call uh, uh, in us the uh, baboon, which is a symbol of Mercury. And that's the animal force that we have to utilize in order to develop the inner powers. When you study the study of Hanuman in the, what, what book is that? Hmm? Ramayana. Yeah. Well, he, he shows a lot of powers there. Right? Yeah. yeah, obviously. He, he, the main power that he utilizes is devotion, I mean, or the, in order to develop his powers. The, uh, devoted to, uh, to Rama and, and Sita, right? And obviously that's uh, elements that we have in the heart. In the beginning is how we are. We begin as Hanuman, right? We are animals. Little by little we, tr we are transformed into humans. We are intellectual animals. Well, the word animal really is anima in Latin. And that means soul. In other words, we are intellectual souls. Because there are many souls that are not intellectual. The cat is not intellectual. Dogs, horses, they are not intellectual. We are intellectual. But they are, ani uh, they are souls too, animas. And that's the root of the word animal. So when somebody says, uh, I hear people saying, animals don't have soul. They are saying, souls don't have souls. In the very root, <laughs> you know. 
is, is incongruency, right? Well, uh, no, it's not uh, that. Uh, he wrote it in Hebrew, when you hear the la the Hebrew language, they they have a lot of vowels spoken, but not written. And the thing is this: it is on purpose. Why the twenty-two letters of the Hebrew alphabet don't have vowels? Simple, because vav. I was playing the letter vav. You see that? Okay, we will utilize the back of this for before finishing with her book. <laughs> All right, you see? There's the letter Vav. That's the spina bellura. All right? E. This is how they write. O. It's above. U. is here. Right? A. This is there. A. So when you are reading there in this uh, modern Hebrew, it depends what what dot are you finding. One dot is E in the bottom. Two dot is A. But if that dot is above, oh, and then it's O. If it's in front, in the belly of the letter, it's U. And if it's one line, it means A. So you see, A, E, E, O, U, our relation with the medulla. Yeah, the, the position of the dots give you, uh, you, you, see, you, you see any letter and only a dot, and then you have to pronounce that letter, it's, for instance, the letter mem. If there's a line underneath, ma, that's the pronunciation. But it has above, and it says me. But sometimes you don't need to use that dot, but I mean, in the bottom is me. You see, you're always confused because in Latin it's above, it's e, but in Hebrew it's. Uh, in the bottom, right? The thing is this. A, E, E, O, U are related with you. Your vav. Right? That's why we, all the rules that we pronounce here, pa, fe, fi, fo, fu, we are doing that, but all, all the vowels are there in relation with the letter vav. Right? And when God was, and when Moses was in front of the deity, it's because all of his vows of vowels or chakras were active. And the way you communicate with God is when your chakras are active. Because God talks not in English. <laughs> uh, he talks in the language that we have to understand with the psychic. With the psyche, with the, with the consciousness. And so we have to put in activity. Sometimes when I'm meditating, for instance, and I have an experience and I receive a message. When I return, I have to meditate, sometimes two days, <laughs> in order to understand what is my inner being telling me. Because he's not going to talk to me. This is precisely what, with the ones that wrote the Bible, and God said this to me, blah, 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 but it's because they understood already what God said. But it's not that he's going to tell you directly in the very moment. Because God forced you to know the truth, because the truth shall make you free. But just like that, no, right? It is a simple, like a joke here, but it's very, very, very clear in English. When Adam didn't fall yet in Eden, he was having that type of conversation and understanding with God, you know, with the light, in other words. But when Adam fell, he was no longer Adam, but Adam. And this is where we are. In the same spelling, but different pronunciation, right? Yes? Huh? Mm -hmm. 
the still uh, that voice is when you are uh, paying attention to your brain and you hear a sound. It's a vibration, very intense vibration that can take, take you to the, to the astral plane. But when in the Bible you hear about that Elias, for instance, was in the cave. This is the cave, the cranium. And all of a sudden he heard the small pitch voice that said, what are you doing here, Elias? This is what is written there. But that is really a, a vibration, a sound that you're hearing in your brain. But in order to hear that inside of you, you have to be very well concentrated and have certain chakras in activity. Because when God communicates to any being, any person, he does it through the spinal medulla. Always. Because there's the way to communicate to us. And even when we are outside, because each body, whether it's physical or spiritual, has always a spinal medulla. That's the main thing. The first thing that you see uh, when a sper the sperm penetrates the ovum, the first thing that ap appears is precisely that, the letter valve, the medulla and the brain. And after that, the rest is appearing in the womb of our mother. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.